LMC casts a wide net over the Sound Shore to bring you local event info, profiles, and conversations. Recorded in the heart of the village in Mamaroneck Cinemas at the studio on the avenue, LMC Media brings you the LMC Cast Community Profiles. Hello and welcome to LMC Cast. My name is Heather Capel, and today we are here to talk about Unearthed, a Remembrance, which is a monument being erected to recognize enslaved peoples here in our areas of Larchmont and Mamaroneck. I am here today with one of the two artists, Sarah Koval, and the project manager, Judith Weber. Thank you both so much oh. for being with us here today. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Of course. So let's just start out. Tell us a little bit about Unearthed. Okay. Well, I'd like to start really talking about the committee that was formed, which actually allowed us to create Unearth. Um, RELM, which is basically stands for Recognizing Enslaved Africans of Larchmont and Mamaroneck, was formed in um, 2018 mm -hmm. by a group of residents here in the mm -hmm. area based on a project from a research project on enslavement that was um, for, I think Ned Benton, who is the, I'm sorry, I have to read this, a professor right. at John Jay College of Criminal Justice and co-director of the Northeastern Slavery Re Records Index, yeah. which is what he specializes in, Judith Zulin Spikes and Gloria Pritz. They were doing this project, and Ned kept saying, nobody knows anything about this. Mm -hmm. And that's what really got them together. It's a large committee of, of local people, including John Pritz, who is the village historian, a number of people from the Historic Society, um, the Mamaroneck Historic Society, and um, uh, local artists and members of the community, both uh, in terms of uh, board trustees and librarian people, people that are related to the library. So they really wanted the, the community to know about it. And they felt that the best way was to create a project to build a memorial on the site of the town center, right behind, I guess, is that the entrance? I'm not sure. Is that the front of the town center at the top of the hill? Mm -hmm. um, and they put out a proposal, a call for proposals that I saw on Arts Westchester's um, uh, artist opportunities list. And when I saw that, I called Sarah, because Sarah is not only an amazing teacher and interest in history, but she's also an amazing artist. I am an artist and also very interested in sort of the diverse complex of communities. Mm -hmm. um, and we were really interested in creating, they wanted us to capture the story and life of the reality that there were plantations here. Mm -hmm. uh, and there were a lot of families that were involved in having plantations and having the enslaved, undocumented, documented people mm -hmm. that worked on here for generations. So I saw it, and I called Sarah, and we talked about it and thought what an opportunity it was. Um, they've had enormous support from the town, mm -hmm. which is great, from all local people right. that have been involved with them. And it's been very exciting. I can tell you a little bit about the committee members if you wanted to. Absolutely. So we have Ned, who's one of the founding members, um, uh, John Pritz, who is um, <clears throat> the uh, town historian and also the trustee at the mm -hmm. Historical Society. You have Gail Boyle, um, who's also a uh, former president of the Mamaroneck Historical Society, Jackie Lorio, co-president of the Mamaroneck Artists Guild, and uh, a prominent sculptor and artist. Um, we have Joanne Shaw, a former member of the Mamaroneck Public Library and the Mamaroneck School Board. Robinette Robinson, long-term resident of Mamaroneck and traces her ancestry to Jack Purdy, a former slave. Leilani Yazar uh, is Mamaroneck Board Trustee. Um, Judith Silverstein is the former publisher of the Larchmont Gazette. Lynn Crowley is the Larchmont Village Sasorian. Jill Perry is a figurative painter and fiber artist. And Sid Albert was also a member of the Mamaroneck Library Board. And he was the first black business owner in Mamaroneck. And uh, oh, so it's, it's very interesting. These people came together and really decided to create this opportunity. So we've been very busy working. Um, there's a site, I'd like to just give you the website where people can go for information. It's uh, larchmontmamaronickslavery.org 
backslash the, memo the dash memorial. Okay. And there you can get all the information about the project. Um, they are involved in fundraising for this project. And if you want more information, um, you basically can contact Realm, that's R E A L M 147, at gmail.com. Wonderful. So, yeah. So, yeah, so, so Sarah, yeah. tell us a little bit about how you got involved with the project and what your artistic vision has been for this monument. Great. Well, it's been such a great opportunity to work on this, these stories mm -hmm. with this committee, with Judith especially. Mm -hmm. um, Sana Musa Sama is the other lead artist on right. this, and um, it's been wonderful to work with her. And we also have two architects, uh, Jorge and Maravi. Um, Maravi Perdomo Caba. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> and Jorge or, uh, or Ventura or Ballas. See, they yes. are both in New Rochelle. Yeah, mm -hmm. they, they came up with a wonderful yeah. model for us. Um, it has changed a number of times, and we love the, uh, uh, where we ended up. It's mm -hmm. really kind of um, a, a great shape and scale. Um, so um, I grew, um, I've lived here um, now 29 years. I raised my son here, and mm -hmm. we're staying. <laughs> my husband and I love living near the mm -hmm. village. Um, the uh, town center is just a several blocks from mm -hmm. my house. So also working on a site-specific project right near where I live to kind of keep looking at it and thinking about it mm -hmm. and uh, living with it is great. Um, so um, I think, you know, all of us, Judith, uh, Sana, and I are all ceramic artists. Mm -hmm. So we right away the idea of working with clay to create a... Um, a curved form that really uh, reflects the hill next to the town center. Mm -hmm. And we also loved not only the curved shapes and retaining walls that were there, um, but also the, the building is a historic building. It's terracotta mm -hmm. architecture because mm -hmm. it was one of the first schools that was built here. Mm -hmm. So we really wanted to make it very site specific using that material. Um, and also I think ceramics we find really um, is uh, very emotive right. um, and a way that we can easily not only describe the stories and relief, right. but also, you know, sauna works in a very emotional, uh, visceral way with clay. So to kind of really show what clay can do, um, especially in this light. I so, love that. Um, and we also love the idea of uner unearthed. Right. Not only are these stories coming yeah. to light, mm -hmm. but also the clay's from the earth. Right. So. Now, can you share one or two of the specific stories that really oh touched my gosh. you? Oh, So it really <laughs> moved me, these yeah. stories. Um, especially, I focused, so I built a curved wall in my mm -hmm. studio. It's really like a stage. Yeah. And now I have my players. So I really featured the mural telling the stories of Billy and Ginny. They were really the two people that we know the most about. Um, there's quite a... Um, uh, beautiful account written by um, one of the Mott family. Um, it's, uh, let me see, Richard Mott, and you can read all of this on the website. Um, so he is, as an 80-year-old man, writing his memoirs and describing the stories that Billy and Ginny, who were enslaved by the Mott family and then freed, and they stayed with them. Um, they had nine children, so, um, and it's very lovingly written. So at one point he says that Ginny, Ginny told him, um, and Ginny and Billy lived to old age. It's um, remarkable because people did not then. Right. Um, so Ginny said, I was kidnapped as a girl. These I'm paraphrasing. Right. Uh, kidnapped as a girl in Africa. Uh, my father was a chief or a tribal leader. I was happy and free. It was warm. I didn't need clothing. Just you get this vision of a uh, happy child. She survived the passage and um, uh, uh, lived on Long Island. The Underhill family were her first, the first family that enslaved her. And then um, she did marry Billy. Billy was born on Long Island. And, um, and then the, uh, the Mott family, they came to work for the Motts. Mm -hmm. The Quakers were the first, the Mott family was Quaker, they were the first to um, free their enslaved peoples, and, um, and so they did stay with them. The Mott family um, uh, had four children, and the, the mother died, so clearly Jenny took on the care of the, those kids, plus her nine. <laughs> Amazing. 
Um, and Billy seemed to have been um, more of a household uh, work, labor. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think he did yeah. as much in the field. Mm -hmm. um, but we know we have drawings of them. It's the only images we have of the enslaved people. Um, I think it was Richard Mott that may have drawn their profiles as an elder couple. Um, and, and did those drawings help inspire some of the, well, the drawings on the more. monument? Yeah. Um, Yes, yes, absolutely. Okay. Just to see how these really specific right. individuals, and this is what they may have looked like, right. you know, it's really moving. Um, Billy smoked a pipe. He loved to fish in the harbor. Um, there's lots of great stories. John Pritz is the one for the storytelling. Yeah. And again, this yeah. monument, I really picture as a place, not only for remembrance, but to learn the stories. Mm -hmm. So I've right. depicted all the different stories, especially kind of generating from Billy and Ginny, mm -hmm. they're the largest figures. They're almost life size on this monument. And then we move back in space and see the various types of labor. Um, yeah. It's interesting that the monument faces the sound and Route 1. So we see not only the sound and that the water, mm -hmm. it's right there. Oh. We're just looking beyond. Right. So it's really... Mm -hmm. But reflective of that yeah, site. There's also a wonderful contrast because Sarah's work is in the is the, the reflective part of it mm -hmm. where you're sitting in front of it. Mm -hmm. The back, the outside of the monument faces Boston Post Road mm -hmm. and that's the story of the transatlantic journey, the loss, the drownings, mm -hmm. and then the story of Cox and Cole escaping large sculptural figures. So it's a very different um, it's an interesting balance because right. one is more reflective where you want to go in and learn the stories mm -hmm. and the other is to sort of see the more violent aspect right. of what it was um, uh, to actually, you know, the little bit of the history. It's hard to, it's hard to tell that story mm -hmm. in a way that, that people are really comfortable with right. and we did not want this to be a political. We really right. wanted to introduce it from an educational and artistic point of yeah. view. So it's really, and Sarah's work and Sana's work is so different, mm -hmm. but the blending of it is so perfect in terms of, right. you, they, it's a very different feeling, but together it's the story, right. which is really very exciting. Yeah, and this is Sana's um, subject matter. I mean, she's really, yeah. a, well, she's we're a, so she's lucky a, a descendant of slaves. Mm -hmm. so we, she's yeah. working with these stories. Right. This is her work. Right, um, oh. and so, she's really now, you know, working all around the country and showing, and we're lucky to have her that's um, work right. on this. Yeah. Now, when did uh, work begin on the monument? Well, oh. this has already been two years <laughs> into the process right. with meetings, redesigning the monument, right. um, lots of drawings. Right. Um, yeah. And now I've been full tilt um, yeah. on making the clay. Uh, yeah. This. Um, inside yeah. of the wall, right. you mm -hmm. know, when you when you um, win a, an opportunity mm -hmm. like this, and it really was um, the the first thing, you know, and this is a large committee, mm -hmm. all of whom they're all slightly different, but they all have the same goal. Of course, and so you know, you present something, and then you need to really listen carefully to what mm -hmm. they're looking for because it's not only just about Sarah and Sana's work or my particular vision, but it's really how do you deliver their vision mm -hmm. in a way that they can embrace. Um, so that it was an interesting process. It had to be redesigned several times mm -hmm. um, for size and scale and content. Mm -hmm. But I think um, we had such a nice experience meeting them. Mm -hmm. And I think there was a very quickly an element of trust that that we were also open mm -hmm. to, you know, sometimes you work with artists and they have their vision and that's their work. But Sarah especially really wanted wanted this to happen mm -hmm. and was so easy to sort of adapt and move and, you know, till the feeling was right that they felt that they were getting what they wanted. Now that, that was a challenge, but she's excellent in doing well, that. Well, I love working. Yeah. It's been great to work collaboratively, yes, not very. only mm -hmm. with the committee, but with Sana right. and Judith and um, right. The work has just gotten richer as a result, yes, yeah. I have to say. Yeah. Um, well, I, I it's personally cannot time. wait to see it. So tell us, when will it be finished and when can we come as a community to view it? So. Well, we, you know, we've been vacillating. We really make sure that the work is really complete mm -hmm. and then it's... Um, 
integrated into the monument, which needs to be, the structure needs to be mm -hmm. built so the work can go on it. Mm -hmm. um, the committee is working on a reader to make sure that um, all the information is there with QR codes that take you back to the source. Right. So we're probably looking at September mm -hmm. at this point, you know, just to make sure that any unanticipated problems can be met without feeling rushed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The other piece of this also is community outreach. We yes. were very eager yeah. to have mm -hmm. community conversations. Right. Um, I'm starting, we're teaching workshops the next three months at the library. Mm -hmm. um, to really do kind of family uh, art workshops to tell the stories and, right. and engage people in the conversation. Right. I grew up, you know, near here in Eastchester. I spent my summer sailing in the yeah. Maranek and Larchmont, and it really hit me hard to hear this mm -hmm. this story. Right. I always pictured that this was all oh, Underground Railroad, and we were all, yeah, you know, real freedom fighters. Yeah. And it's a very complicated history. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting, mm -hmm. and it's worth delving into mm -hmm. you know john jay all our streets are named after mm -hmm. right and we have a list of families and they were people were that, like john jay fought right. for abolishing slavery and he enslaved people at the same time and we right. see this duplicity mm -hmm. it's um it's we need to know our stories absolutely they're I such important stories i love visiting the um barry avenue church and um the first baptist yeah. church talking to the elders they're thrilled about the project and um, to kind of get their interest mm -hmm. in stories, learn yeah. their histories. But I, I do, do want to say the Maronick Library is so supportive. Mm -hmm. We have three workshops coming up, one November, um, September 28th, 28th yeah. one the last week in October, and one the last week in November. And on the 5th of October, uh, in their gallery, in their lower space, mm -hmm. there'll be an exhibition featuring Sarah's work, information in the big glass case about Sana and the architectural team, and all about Realm, and, um, and uh, Lindsay, What's her last name? Leslie. Oh, Leslie, Leslie Smith. Who has been documenting with mm -hmm. Sarah. Does beautiful photography. So there'll be an opportunity for people to come and see the work and see, feel the work and right. see the process. And also the Realm Committee members will be there and will be, John will be telling stories. <laughs> so it would be, it really is from two to four on October 5th. And it would be really a great opportunity. And all the, the information about the workshops. We have a collage workshop. Unfortunately, I was supposed to do that, but I'm moving. Uh, it was just too bad. Um, and then Sarah's doing. Oh, she, Sarah's doing all workshop. of them. She's well, doing, we have two sculpture workshops. So. Right, you're doing a diorama workshop. Yes, and one then is diorama. The last and workshop. the other one is clay hands. Right, mm -hmm. clay hands. And right. the first one is paper. So, right. yeah. and those are all at the Mamaroneck Library. Everything yes. at the Mamaroneck yes. Library. Yes. They've been absolutely yes. lovely, supporting you know what we're doing uh -huh. and making the space available to us. So I just want to put a plug in that they've been great to work with. Oh, yes. that's yeah. wonderful. Yeah. 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 Any other last words, final thoughts? that you want the community to know about Unearthed? Well, you know, I feel like for me as an artist, and I've done other other public work, it, that this is a wonderful vehicle. Mm -hmm. um, I think especially sculptural and three-dimensional vehicle to tell a story and be able to go up and touch it and mm -hmm. feel it. You know, sometimes if people are doing murals and they're very far away. This is such a personal thing yeah. that you can move up to it, you can feel it, you can sit in front of it. Um, it's not terribly fragile. Yeah. So this is always, I was a ceramic artist for a long term. I, I don't do it anymore, but I always felt that the tactile aspect of clay, the dimensionality of clay, um, and how people relate to clay mm -hmm. made this a really wonderful opportunity. So yes, thank you. Sarah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Right. Well, we hope that everyone will take that opportunity to go to those workshops and, of course, come and see the beautiful monument when it is finally finished. And can you give us that website again one more time? Sure. It's, um, I have to put my glasses on. <laughs> it's uh, HTTPS, I, we'll just do Larchmont Mamaronic. Larchmont, here. Mm -hmm. Larchmont, Larchmont Mamaronic, Mamaronic Slavery. Slavery.org. Right. Slash You'll see stories. The You'll Memorial. See yeah. Yeah. Excellent. So well, it's easy to find. You can, of course, it, it really is easy wonderful. to find. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, thank you so much to Judith Weber and to Sarah Coble. Thank you uh, for being with us today here on LMC Cast. Yes. Great. Well, thank we'll, you. We'll see you next time. The LMC Cast Community Profiles, produced at LMC Media Studio on the Avenue. Visit lmcmedia.org to book your time in this state-of-the-art, convenient location, walkable from the Metro North train station on Mamaroneck Avenue. 
You can also support this nonprofit media center at lmcmedia.org slash donate.